QuickBooks Online 2024 Bundle Month 1 Reports for a Client. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to go on stage with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online Sample Company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side. I'm going to be closing this out. We're going to right click on the favorite of the balance sheet. Open link in a new tab. Right click on the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Open link in a new tab. Right click on the trial balance. Open link in a new tab. If you don't have that trial balance in the favorites, you could search for it. Let's go to the right to tab to see what we opened. Close in the hamburger. And then we're going to go up top to change that range. We're going to go 10124 tab, 013124 tab. We will run it to refresh it and repeat. Tab to the right and repeat. Closing the hamburger, changing the range, 010124 tab, 013124 tab, refreshing the report again, and then tab to the right and repeat. Closing the hamburger, changing the range, 010124 tab, 013124 tab, and then we'll run it to refresh it again. Let's go back to that balance sheet now. Quick recap of what we have done thus far for month one, which we're basically wrapping up with this uh, presentation. That being, we set up the QuickBooks file. We then put together those foundational items that are found under the COG, under the Your Company and Lists, things like the account settings, the users. We then set up the payroll. We set up our lists like the chart of accounts. And like the product lists, we set up our customers, vendors, employees. And then we entered our beginning balances, imagining that we had some accounting system prior to this. We added the beginning balances into the system. And then we added, once we had the foundation down, one month of data input, including the first few journal entries being those unique typically to the startup process or to when you're uh, increasing the size of the business, such as getting money from something other than customers because you don't have the utilities, you don't have the stuff in order to generate revenue yet. Meaning we finance the company with a loan or with money from the owner so we could buy the inventory and the fixed assets, which we then used to start to generate the revenue. And we recorded the first month of our revenue in the system. Now we want to imagine uh, presenting the financial statements to somebody at the end of the period, our primary objective or our primary kind of scenario will be that we're a bookkeeper and we're gonna batch the reports together to present them to a client. Now note, whether you're working internally in the accounting department or you're working as a bookkeeper, no matter where you're working these days, you're gonna have reports generally that you're gonna be generating, often from something like a database program like uh, QuickBooks. And the presentation of the reports is a huge part of the process. It's like half the battle, as G.I. Joe would say, but no one knows who G.I. Joe is anymore. It's sad. But in any case, it's half the battle. So what, And that's because the people that we present the reports to often might not be financial professionals, right? Because that's why they hired us. They hired us to do the bookkeeping. So, for example, in this business, we imagine that the owners of the business are the guitar shop. 
So if we're not doing our own books, if I was doing books for this guitar shop, then obviously they're not going to know exactly all the ins and outs of all of the reports. They're not going to be an expert on the numbers. What they will be able to tell is like, hey, does this report look good? Did they give it to me on time? Does it, does it actually like tie out to, to a basic uh, degree? Does it make sense to me and so on? And so that's a lot of that is just going to be the presentation. Also note, you might be thinking, well, they already have access to the reports because they have access to QuickBooks Online because everything's on the internet right now, which is true, but they might not be able to generate the reports basically as easily. So you may still generate the reports, put a package together and present that package so that they have something you know, in a report format for them. So that's, that's going to be the basic concept that we'll put together here. How often might you do this? Well, I would think that you might do this at the end of the month, right? Because a month in report, you might also do it at the end of the quarter. And you might also do it basically, of course, at the end of the year, which is going to be the big one, because at the end of the year, you have to do external reporting or at least tax preparation if you're in the United States. So oftentimes you might think of the reports in the middle of the year as giving assurance to your, your client that you're still here, right? It's not like you're just letting the file go and you know, you're, you're giving them reports. You're saying, I'll be around at the time you need me at the end of the year. Okay. So then the question is, well, what kind of reports might we give to a client and how might we give them those reports? Obviously we want some format of the balance sheet. We want some format of the income statement, and then we might have further reports that we could attach to it above and beyond that. But I'm going to stick to mainly the balance sheet and the income statement report because we could have more complexity than just a balance sheet and an income statement. Because especially once we have multiple periods, we could start doing comparative balance sheet and income statement reports and compare this year to last year, this month to last month, this month to the same month in the prior year. Once we start doing those comparisons, it gets quite uh, complicated, right? There's, there's a lot of different reports that we could make. We'll see more of that when we get to the second month of reporting when we actually have two periods that we can do some comparisons for. Right now, it's the first month of operations in the new system, so we can't do those kind of comparative reports. Also note, to make this as easy as possible, you might then create a system where you can, where you can uh, have internal reports versus external reports and possibly customize them. And you want to do that as easy as possible. So at the end of the month, you can easily just generate the reports and provide them uh, to a client. How would you actually give them to a client? You can give them to a client by email, but you have to be careful because you probably don't want just a mess of reports attached on an email. So you might want to at least zip them if you email them, but you can print them. Most likely you might not be handing the reports in paper to people these days. You can also, uh, export them as a PDF file, allowing you to attach them to at least one email instead of like five emails for different reports. And you could, you could also use the PDF file to put them in a cloud drive, like the Google Cloud or a OneDrive or something and give them access to it that way. You might want to number the reports so they can open them in one area. You can also use Excel. Excel can be used not usually to present the reports to others, but possibly to further format the reports, making them more fancy or different than other people might do uh, with it. And you can also use Excel to either integrate with Word or just simply to print all of them from Excel on one PDF file. Uh, and then you can also basically use the management reports as well, which is a little function in uh, QuickBooks allowing you to put them in one PDF file, basically with an intro page and so on. So. No matter what system we use, the general idea would be, let's first customize some reports. So I'm going to go to the first tab again. I'm going to go down to the uh, reports on the left and close up the hamburger and look at our business reports. Note that most of these reports, as we saw before, are kind of repeats of the balance sheet reports and income statement report. This one, though, the that not that one, the balance sheet summary might be one that we want to start with. So if I right click on this and open link in a new tab, I'm going to pull this to my second report. So this might be the second uh, report that we deal with. If I close this back out, why? Because it's a balance sheet, but 
it's it's now summarized. It's going to be easier to look at. This is often the leading report you might put into a presentation or a batch of reports because it's not too overwhelming. So whereas the balance sheet report here has more accounts, can be a little bit overwhelming. Now you could basically create the summary account by closing up all of the tags here. But sometimes when you when you export this information, it opens up the triangles. So for example, if you were to export to Excel, even though you collapsed the triangles, it'll still basically expand them oftentimes. And so that's why the summary is, is useful. So now you have uh, each of the categories of, of uh, account categories has its own uh, grouping and it's a shorter report. Now, the further customization I might do with this would be typically, and we have a whole nother course or section on customization, so I won't go into it in detail, but I'm gonna say customize and we can then say, I usually remove the pennies because we might not need pennies uh, for decision-making purposes, although internally it might be useful to have the pennies. I like to have the negative numbers bracketed and red. That makes them pop out a little bit. We don't have a whole lot of control over colors and font styles within QuickBooks, but we can, we can do that. And then on the filters, uh, no filters, headers and footer. So this is going to be the logo, good. Uh, company name, okay. Report title, balance sheet summary. That sounds good to me. Report period. Uh, I don't really, uh, yeah, I want the report period. I don't want this date prepared, time prepared, and report basis on the footer. So I'll typically remove those. And then the alignment, I'll keep it centered. So there we have it. So we don't have anything in the footer down here, and it's a little bit cleaner without the pennies. Now, I don't want to have to do that every time, so I'm going to save the customization. Save the customization. I'm going to number them. I'm going to call this my first report, the number one uh, report. I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to call the group. These are going to be my month and reports. Now, when we get to the end of the second month, I'll already have some of my reports in there, and we can continue uh, from there. It'll make it a little bit easier. So let's add that. We're going to put them in here, month end reports, and then let's save it. Boom. If I go back to the first tab and let's see if it saved it, we're in the reports. I'm going to go into the customized reports and you might need to refresh the screen because we're in a second tab here and there it is. So there's our month end reports under the little drop down, and it looks great. If you need to edit it, you can edit it. If you didn't put it in the, in the proper category, that's how you edit the categories too. You can't edit the categories until you actually go into something to add the category. All right, so there's our there's our balance sheet. Then you might want like a normal balance sheet. This might be the second report that we have, which is just simply a standard balance sheet. However, because we already had like a simple balance sheet, maybe we make this one a little bit more complex, possibly giving it like a vertical analysis to it. So this time, maybe I'll do something and this is where the decision comes in. Do, what do you want to do? How many reports do you want to give? Do you want to give another balance sheet and then another balance sheet that has a vertical analysis and then a horizontal analysis and then comparing this year to last year or this month to last month and so on. So, but for this one, I'm going to say, also note that when we have the external reports, there's some zeros in here. See, there was a zero number here because there was activity in it. Don't, don't need to report that externally, although it's very useful internally when I'm using this report. So I might then say uh, over here, I want to say non-zero numbers. Run it and it gets rid of all the numbers that, are, that have a zero. So that is good. Okay. And then maybe I'll go here and I want to do a percent of column percent. Boom. And then I'm not going to do this up top. We'll do that in the second month because I have no other period to compare it to. By the way, that's one of the problems when you when you use the system of starting a new accounting system and you don't pull in the detail from the prior accounting system. Uh, you get to clean things up, but you don't you can't run the comparative reports in one system because you didn't pull in the prior numbers, right? So so just something to keep aware of. There's pros and cons to any method. So this is just basically taking each of these numbers divided by the total. So if I take the accounts receivable, for example, 14687.5 divided by the total, 227695.77, moving the decimal two places over will give us that 6.45% uh, about. 
So that's going to be the idea of the vertical analysis. And that's quite useful, especially if we're benchmarking to like uh, another company, which is typically larger than us. So let's do that. And I'm going to say, let's go ahead and then do the customization. And I'm going to get rid of the sense negative numbers bracketed and red. And then we're going to say in the header and footer, I'm going to make this to, 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 to no date time report basis. And then I could change the name just in here. So instead of calling it just a normal balance sheet, I'm going to call it a balance sheet like vertical analysis. Did I spell that right? I doubt it. I don't know if I spelled that right. But I'm going to keep it as it is because you get the idea. And then let's save customization. And there it is. So I'm going to change the name here. I'm going to call it number two. And I'm numbering the reports so that they're going to show up in order that I want to be presenting them in. And then we'll save that one. So there it is. MUI B to the N, B, N. All right. If I go to the first tab and I refresh the screen, I should have two reports and they're numbered. So they'll be in order in my customized reports. Let's go to the third. Let's go to the profit and loss report. Now in the profit and loss, you, you might try to do a similar kind of summary thing where you basically collapse the, the each of the period each of the segments but again that doesn't always work because if you export the reports for example it'll it will expand them again however if you have these kind of subtotals in here where you have a lot of sub accounts which some people do like this one you can collapse them by using the collapse up top so that typically still sticks because the triangle has been removed basically entirely from the sub accounts, but not from the different account type categories. So, so that might be something that you want to do at least as the starting report. And then maybe you have another one that's going to be a more detailed uh, profit and loss, you know, after that one. So let's save that. Let's now I'm, I'm going to do my customization up top. We'll customize this one, get rid of the pennies negative numbers bracketed and we're going to say headers and footers get rid of the date time report basis like we normally do and then instead of calling it an income statement on uh, profit and loss i'm going to say it's an income statement and that's one thing that you can do that might and this let's say summary that's one thing you can do that makes it a little bit different than possibly they've seen in other uh other bookkeepers just changing the name from a profit and loss to an income statement. Some people might like that. Some people might not, but it might be a differentiating factor than what, you know, other people are doing just to, because no one changes the name and you could do that if you want to. So then we can uh, save customization and I'm going to, whoop, that's not saving it. Save customization, just calling this number three report now and selecting the drop down month in reports to do it and then save it and so if i go to the first tab again and refresh it so now we've got our uh three reports in there boom 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 and let's do one more i'm going to right click on this and duplicate it and then maybe you want your expanded report possibly uh so i could then say now i'm going to expand it and so now that that drop down is back we don't have a lot of stuff in here because it's only one month of a, a practice problem, but then maybe I, I once again do the vertical analysis. So maybe I say I want percent of income, which is the most common vertical analysis on the income statement, meaning we're comparing everything now, not to the bottom line, not to net income, but rather to income. That's why this is 100%. So we're comparing everything to the goal of the business, which is revenue generation. So for example, cost of goods sold 37242 divided by income 53857 is if we move the decimal two places over about 69%. Uh, percent. It's, it's, you would think it'd be closer than that. I don't know why I think I let's do that again 37242 divided by 53857. So 69 uh, point once interesting let's do another one let's do gross profit is going to be one six six one five and then divided by 
the income of the 53857. That gives us about 31%. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's going to be the idea. Let's do our analysis, our customizing. So I'm going to say negative number. It's already done there. I'm just going to change the name to it now. Let's go into income statement, but not a summary this time. We're going to call it vertical analysis to call analysis. I spelled it wrong. Analysis. Let's copy that. And then we'll save customization. I'm going to change the name this time to four income statement vertical analysis. Let's save it. And then if I go back to my first tab again, we've got four reports now. So now you can see it's pretty easy to generate those reports if we needed to because now in the following month, I can just open them up, change the date and then and then save them. So let's close all these now. I'm actually going to close all these and pretend that now the, the month ends here. We already have these. They're in order. I'm just going to generate them and then do what we want to do with them. So I'm going to right click on it and oh, they won't let me do it that way. I can't right click. That's annoying. I'm going to right click up here and duplicate and then I'll open them back up. I'll say boom, balance sheet. And then I'm going to export it as a PDF file. So I'll hit the drop down export as a PDF file and we'll say to do save as a PDF and then I'm going to put I'm just going to drag and drop it into my folder right here it's going to drag and drop so we'll take it and it just goes ah drag it over get over here and then we'll put it right there boom it's in our reports folder and then we'll do that again so I'll close this back up close this up I'll duplicate this again right click and duplicate pull it to the right for my second report, close up the hamburger and the next one, we could just open it, we would change the date if we needed to. And then I can just say, boom, export to PDF, and then save as PDF, drag and drop. Boom, there's my second report. And then repeating the process first tab, and then right click up top duplicate pull it to the right. And then we're going to close the hamburger, open the income statement and print that one, dropping it down, export to PDF, save as a PDF, drag and drop. Boom. So there we have it. And so we, we might need to renumber them in our folder over here, which is kind of annoying because it didn't pull in the number on the name. But there it is. Let's do one more and then right click and duplicate, pull that to the right. And then I'm going to open up what not that one, I'm going to open up the income statement, the last one. And then basically simply export it PDF, save as a PDF, and then drag and drop it. Boom. Now if these were out of order, because the names were different, I might right click on here, rename it and then say this is going to be the first report. And then the vertical analysis, this is my second report. So I'm going to right click on it, rename it for report number two. And then this is my summary. So I'm going to right click on this one and make it number three. Uh Oh, I'm going to delete that. It does that sometimes. It's very frustrating. Number three, and then this one is going to be right click and number four. Ah, you did it again. Deletes it like that. Okay, number four. So now when if we were to attach these to an email, even if we attach them separately, at least they're numbered, right? <laughs> so they can we download them. Uh, and if we can then give them to someone on a OneDrive, if we wanted to provide the reports that way, uh, uh, if we were going to give them to it uh, by an email or, so, or, or deliver them in electronically, we might want to zip them. So I'm going to put them in another folder. And I'm going to say this is going to be uh, month one reports, or I probably should call them, you know, January reports. And then I can put these into the folder. I cannot attach the folder to say an email, but I can right click on it and I could zip the file to do, 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 
zip, zip file, and I could attach the zipped file to an email. So those are the ways, once we have them on the computer, share it on a OneDrive, uh, Google uh, Drive or OneDrive, some kind of cloud storage, Dropbox, or you can then uh, zip it and then possibly deliver it possibly by email or something that way. Okay, so that's one method that we could use. I'm gonna close this back out, close this back out. Now, you also might go internal to this little management report thing. So in the management report, I'll do this fairly quickly because we had another course or section on it, but you could create a management report. So I might just copy the overview by selecting the dropdown and duplicate it so I don't mess up the default one. And then you can say, okay, I wanna edit this one. And then it gives you like a, a, a kind of generic but useful intro page and then a table of contents. And then uh, you have another page that you could include to give like an intro page and then your actual reports. Now it's pulling in the profit and loss and balance sheet standard. I want the custom ones. So I'm gonna add a new report here. And then when I look at these, I'm just looking for the ones that are not standard, the ones that are custom. So here's report number one. And then I'll add a new one, boom. Duh, 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 duh. And then this is gonna be the report number two and then add a new report. Doot, doot, doot. And then this is gonna be report number three, and then ultra vase another time. And we're gonna say this is gonna be report number four. And then I could go into each of them and adjust the name. So I'm gonna delete these two. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I wanna go into this one again. And he, down here, I don't want, I just want it to be called balance sheet summary. So I'm gonna get rid of the location. And here, I'm gonna want this to be, get rid of the locate, get rid of that. And then I want this one to be, do, 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 get rid of the number on where it's found in our system. And one more time, boom, and get rid of the numbering. And then that looks pretty good, I think. And then we have the end notes. So that's pretty nice. Uh, you can say, let's preview it. So it gives you kind of this intro page. It's pretty, you know, you can't do much with it, but it's pretty clean and it looks, it looks nice. It's a level up from just attaching the reports to an email, gives you a nice title page. If you wanted to use another page, I think it has an intro page if you wanted to use it. And then you've got the balance sheet. It looks a little bit different than, than what we had. If you print the reports out this way, you could see that if I, if I look at the reports in here, there's a bit different look and feel to it than this PDF. So there's there's no color in this one for one. Uh, maybe that's the only difference, but it looks definitely gives it a different look to have the color in there. And there's the uh, the income statements to do, do, and there we have it. So pretty nice, but there's not a whole lot of flexibility to it uh, if you wanted to make further changes. If you want it, you can do a similar thing by exporting these reports to Excel, and then you can add some little touches in Excel if you wanted to, and you can also print them all on one PDF file. So let's just show that method. So this time I'm gonna go into these same reports. I'm just gonna export to Excel, and then I'll open this first one up, and then I'll try to put all of the reports on this file. So let's open this up, and I'm just gonna say enable, and we're gonna put it into here copy the location and I'm just going to say file save as boom and then in this location and I'm going to call this the month one reports reports but this time in Excel so so now uh, it didn't do it month one reports maybe i'll put a period after it because maybe okay so now so now we can format this in excel so if you wanted to do other formatting usually i'll go to the layout and back on over here so i can see it. now one of the problems is it doesn't really center it it kind of puts it up in the corner but you could center it by just adding a column right click insert a column i won't spend a lot of detail on this time because uh I want to, we've talked about this before, but if I put these last two margins, this is one way that you can try to get it to fit 
and then I just have it like in the middle because of these two margins which are evenly spaced on the side. That's one way you could do it. You could change the titles and whatnot if you wanted to. Like maybe you want the title up top to be black and white. This is what we did last time. Maybe you want to format it a little bit differently uh, in here, like putting grid lines around it. And then you'd have to put little underlines under all the underlines. Just to, you can make it look different. I'm not a, an expert on making the thing look pretty, but you know, you a little bit goes a long way. You can do a lot more with the font style and the colors and stuff like that. If you if you wanted to do that, remembering that you'll have to do that every month because because you can't save those changes as you generate another report. So you don't want to get too crazy on it, but you can add a lot more that other people will, aren't doing just by a few touches could go a long way because you can't do much of anything really in this system here. You can't change the, t the text or you can't change the, the colors that much. You can't change the format a lot much at all. So a little thing, little things could go a long way uh, in making it look nice, which I'm not an expert at, but I just want to point that out. All right, let's do the next one. Let's export this to an, an Excel file. I'm going to open it up, but this time I want to take the new tab and put it into the other workbook that I already have open. So I have to have the two workbooks open. I'm going to right click on the tab down below and move it. And I want to move it to the drop down, the month one reports. So I'm just going to move it over there and then I'm going to drag it to the right. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll do this fairly quickly. It won't drag. What is wrong with you? I told you. Okay. And then I'm going to check out this side and then this side. So then let's insert a column over here. And so now it's kind of centered. That's good. I'll just make the title black and white, and then I'll put some brackets around it just so it looks somewhat similar. Uh, and then I, again, I would have to put all the underlines in there to make it look uh, nicer, but I won't do that right now just to give you an idea because we're, we're running long again. The producer's going to be pissed, man. Okay, that's okay. This is worth it. People are going to, people need to know this stuff can't just you can't cram it into like I'm sorry I can't cram it into a five minute presentation okay it's impossible okay I'm gonna right click on here and then move it again and then we're gonna say move to the report and then I'll drag it to the right and once again we'll go to the tab here and back over and then I'm gonna insert right click insert on a column, right click, insert. And this one I could probably make, well, wait a sec, let's do this one on this side. <laughs> All right, let's make this black and white. All right, and then we'll say, let's put some borders around this and let's just do the last one. And we'll say, drop it down, export it to Excel open up the last one and then then we have to stop after this one because the fun must end sometime right click on the tab move it putting it into the month one report we'll drag it to the right drag it to the right and then go to my view this side that side and then select the a column right click insert and then that looks fairly centered. We'll make this title black and white to make it fancier and or show you how you might an approach to make it fancier, put some borders around it. Not sure if that's totally fancy. And then we have it. So then then I can print all of these. I could also create a header page in Excel if I wanted to, or I can try to integrate it with Word if I wanted to integrate it with a word processor so I can get everything on one PDF and then I can use a cute PDF print or some PDF printer to simply print it all on one file. So if I go back to the first tab and print it now, for example, I'm using a cute PDF printer, which you can search for and I believe is free. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but that's what I'm using. And then you can select the drop down and entire worksheet and there's the entire worksheet. So there's the first one, boom. Again, you could format it a little bit uh, better mostly than I have like I might not I might not need these massive margins I might make it larger uh, in the middle or something uh, but in any case I won't get into that now 
you could do, you could so you could get more fancy with it. But let's just do this now, and I'm going to print it. But it's not going to go to a printer. It's going to go to my cute PDF printer, and then I'm just going to put it into my folder here. Da -da, month one reports. Save it. So then I can open it up this way and say, where did you go? And so boom. So now I can open it up this way and I have them all on one report. So I can put one report as an attachment this way. And I could create a header like we did with the management report pretty easily to be as nice as the one that's in, that's in the management report thing, right? And so we have this look and feel to it. So this look and feel to it, versus you again this doesn't you it's probably kind of ugly you can do better than that but that's the idea versus this look and feel right this is the pdf that they created uh this is one report of the pdf versus the internal report method of this uh look and feel uh advanced print preview so there we have it so now, the only one of these, you can choose one of these or the other that looks great, that, that you think is the best, but the only one that you actually have flexibility with to change to any large extent is this one. So this one might look the worst right now because I'm not good at it, but, but the only one that you could change and make like really fancy is really this one. Once you have it into an Excel, uh, you can add whatever header page you want. You can add a, you know, another intro page. You can integrate it within Word and you can change the fonts and whatnot and make it look uh, fancy.